Hello and welcome to this first episode of History Bubble Extra. On this special episode of History Bubble, we will be covering someone, some place, or some ancient civilization or country that didn't make it into the first video. Today, on Albania, we will be covering Skanderbeg. He was named an Albanian national hero for keeping the Ottomans from invading back in the 15th century. This means we will have to dive deeper into the history of medieval Albania. So it all starts with the first independent state of the Principality of Castorti, which was named that way because its founder's surname was Castorti. Skanderbeg's father joined and managed to expand from just owning a few small villages to what's now most of central Albania and thus created the Principality of Castorti. But he opposed the Ottomans and fought against them, which ended up with his principality losing and him having to pay tribute to the Ottomans and kind of becoming their vassals and kind of becoming their vassals. Around 1405, Gion's wife gave birth to a son. He named George or Gerge in Albanian. George had five sisters and three older brothers. By the age of 18, Jort was sent as a hostage to the Ottomans. Hostage is probably not the right word because they were very well treated and went to some of the best schools in the Ottoman Empire. But it was common practice for the Sultan to keep his Christian tributes and vassals in check. After he had finished his military schooling, Jort got a bit of land and started to fight with the Ottomans. Skanderbeg was also forced to convert to Islam and was renamed Iskander by the Ottomans. This is also the reason for the name Skanderbeg, since through the translation Iskander became Skanderbeg. A rebellion was staged against the Ottomans by Christian lords controlled by the Ottomans, some of them being Skanderbeg's relatives, but he stayed truthful to the Ottomans. Skanderbeg showed his skill in the Ottoman military, and they gave him more and more land to control, and a 5,000 man cavalry regiment to lead. Some of the land he got was from his father since he lost much of it while rebelling, and soon his father and two of his older brothers died. But during the crusade of Varna, Skanderbeg deserted the Ottoman military along with 300 Albanian cavalrymen, who went to his holding in Kurje a few weeks later. He declared his independence and also to be descendant of an old rebellion noble family. To increase his rights to part of the country, he started to conquer castles, villages and forts and soon controlled a larger area than his father had. He also converted back to Christianity and forced the people who followed him to do the same. Skanderbeg joined up with the previous smaller rebellions in the area to fight against the Ottomans and they called themselves the League of Lecce. Because Skanderbeg could not field a large army, he led a guerrilla war in the mountainous terrain of Albania, striking the Ottomans where they were the weakest. With his around 10,000 men, these tactics were very viable. But in the year 1444, Skanderbeg faced an Ottoman army in the field and they outnumbered him almost 3 to 1, or maybe as 2 to 1 or even less, it's hard with these uh, sources since much of it may just be Christian propaganda. But it is likely that Skanderbeg had 15,000 men and Ottomans led by Ali Pasha had somewhere between 25,000 and 40,000 men, likely the lower amount. Skanderbeg had mowed his forces to the destination for a defensive position against the Ottomans. The place he had chosen was a hilly plain surrounded by many forests, and in those forests, Skanderbeg had hidden 3,000 of his men to rear attack the Ottomans in battle. This was done before the Ottomans force came to the place of the battle and encamped close to the Albanian forces. While Skanderbeg men had straight to stay quiet during the night from his orders, the Ottomans were said to be parting and sending out men to provoke the Albanian, leading to small fights between the armies. In the morning of the battle, Skanderbeg placed his forces in the bottom of the hill. Ali, leading the Ottomans, saw this as a chance for victory in order a full-on attack on the Albanian forces with most of his men charging down the hill. This was Skanderbeg's plan. Looking weak and incompetent to make the Ottomans do something foolish. And now it had worked. He ordered his hidden cavalry to attack and they did 
causing huge damage and devastating rear attack, routing much of the Ottoman army, and Albanians started surrounding the larger Ottoman force, and soon the battle was won. The battle was a huge victory for Skanderbeg, who had lost most likely around 4000 men against Ottoman at least double that, maybe even 5 times their losses. Some sources say Skanderbeg lost 120 men, but as I said, Christian crusade propaganda. Three more battles were fought against the remaining Ottomans, and three times the Ottomans were defeated, and at least one of those times it was because Skanderbeg had tricked them. The Venetians had been a strong ally to Skanderbeg during the war because of their close ties to George's father. Lecce, which was the main base for the League of Lecce, was in Venetian territory and they had let the Albanians be there. They soon realized this was a bad choice because the forces of League was now in their territory and soon a territorial dispute over a fortress triggered a war between them. This led to the League facing a two front war against the Ottomans and the Venetians. The two front exhausted the Albanians but in most engagement the loss was less than the enemies. The Albanians won a large battle against the Venetians in northern Albania and that won them a peace treaty. They did not get much from it but they no longer had to fight a two front war. The war was now back against the Ottomans who had captured a strategic fortress on the Albanian border. Svetingrad in what is now Macedonia. This meant the Ottomans had it much easier to march into the country but it had been a loss to 20,000 men against Albanian who had lost almost none. The huge casualties was because of assaults from the league's guerrilla fighters. The Ottomans soon started a siege of the city Gorje with their main force being led by the Sultan. Skanderbeg knew of the city's strong defenses and started scorching the earth around them. To keep the Ottomans from resupplying, they also made numerous attacks on the Ottoman supply carts and attacked all caravans trying to resupply the besieged. One Venetian caravan was not attacked for a while because they didn't want to trigger a war with the Venetians, but it was later attacked, almost triggering a war with them. But luckily for them in Albania, this war never happened. This led to the besiegers starving, dehydrating and dying of the seas, and more did every day. The Sultan soon lived to the siege and escaped, having lost 20,000 men and more in his escape, including himself. But even with this success, Skanderbeg had lost most of his territory, but it also granted him much fame in the Christian world and the people started sending him money to help his cause, which he did, and he did regain his large territory. One especially helpful was, was Alfonso V of Aragon, who gave him a huge report in exchange for Skanderberg becoming his vassal. But this was mostly a name and he was still de facto independent. More Ottoman attack came and more was defeated. In one of the more famous battles of Skanderbeg's, he killed and captured 15,000 respectively. This was so great a loss for the Ottomans, a five years truce was up. He helped the son of Alfonso to keep Italy to the crown of Aragon at that time too. The Ottomans kept invading but now they invaded the Venetians too so Skanderbeg allied with them and together they won more battles. A second siege was Korea was started but it once again ended with an Ottoman defeat and later also a third siege of Korea which also failed. In 1468, Skanderbeg fell ill with malaria and died. Just a few years later, Albania was part of the Ottoman Empire and had been conquered. And well, that about wraps it up. That's all I want to cover here today, so see you in my next video about Algeria.